This is a public health announcement brought to you by Heather Shepard. The Primal Pioneer. Live an outdoor life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Primal Pioneer podcast. I'm your host, Heather Shepard, medical health practitioner and creator of the Sunlight RX. Today's episode is chock full of the benefits of red light and photobiomodulation. During this episode, I interview red light expert Kyle, owner and founder of Midwest Red Light Therapy over at MidwestRedLightTherapy.com, a company dedicated to helping people improve their health by improving their light environment. Today, humans continue to break all of nature's laws, and one big way we do so is by living and working under junk light or aka artificial light. Since the invention of the incandescent light bulb in 1879 by Thomas Edison, we now decide versus the sunlight when to turn on and when to turn off lights. Before this invention, we structured our daily lives and work schedules around sunlight. And this is something that I personally am continuing to move more and more towards in my life, my work schedule, and just simply how I spend my time. And reason being, junk light has significant negative health impacts on our metabolism, our hormone production, our energy levels, and really the health of our entire body. It's one of the biggest blocks to healing we are faced with today. When we break nature's laws by working, living, and playing under fake light, such as LEDs, fluorescence, and even light that comes through our windows, this is all considered junk light, fake light, artificial light, and it compromises our health in huge ways. What your doctor likely isn't telling you, actually, most of them aren't even aware of the fact that the light that hits your eye and your skin is one of the biggest determining factors of your health. The light that hits your eye literally runs and signals your body's metabolism, endocrine function, and hormone release. And this is why just by looking at junk light, you can increase your risk for type 2 diabetes, obesity, cancer, and sleep disorders such as insomnia, just to name a few there. But during this episode, Kyle and I dive into the topic of red light, aka photobiomodulation. And this light, red light, allows your mitochondria and ATP energy production to work at 100% efficiency. It is a big part of the light spectrum that's missing from our lives today. And Kyle and I are going to get into how you can improve your light environment, your red light exposure, so you can begin to bring more awareness and health around your light environment. And we're gonna teach you the impact that light has on all aspects of your health. Now, let's dive into the show to learn all about the benefits of red light. Okay, Kyle, thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to the show. I'm super stoked to have you on to talk about red light, the healing benefits of red light. And you've got an awesome, awesome company going that it looks like you've built from the ground up, Midwest Red Light Therapy. And I'm really excited to have you share about your experience with red light, your offerings of red light therapy with with the listeners here because I mean there's a lot going on in the world right now and this is an awesome resource and just I think an area that people aren't super knowledgeable in about how light affects our biology, our metabolism and um, so many biochemical processes in our body. So I'm super stoked to have you on to get the listeners, some information, some more information on red light therapy. So thanks so much for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Hopefully I can answer any questions you have and shed some light on stuff that can help people out, help your listeners out. Yeah, absolutely. I know you can. And, you know, to start off with, I'd like to hear a little bit about your story and background. What drew your attention to red light therapy to starting this whole business and did you have like a personal healing experience a healing experience with a family member like 
how did this come about in your life? Yeah, that I knew you were going to ask that question. And uh, <laughs> honestly, I woke up a couple of times in the middle of the night trying to figure out how I could den- condense the answer. Um, <laughs> I don't want to go too much about myself, but I guess if I was to shorten this as much as possible, um, about 10 years ago, uh, I was about 10 years into a job doing computer programming, uh, web programming, uh, computer like website design, mainly building uh, e-commerce websites. And I was making them for a bunch of medium, small size companies. And I kept saying to myself, like the internet right now, everybody's starting to buy online. Like I need to build myself a website. And at the time I'm like, well, what could it be? You know, like, what are we doing? So at that time we were doing a lot of boating, a lot of skiing. Uh, we were always on water. We were always under the sun on water. And the problem that I was going to solve with this product was people kept losing their expensive sunglasses in the lake, you know, (laughs) sink to the bottom. So I was like, all right, that's it. So I started a sunglass company. Within three years, I was able to quit my job of 12 years and start this company. I called it Midwest Shades, right? And started selling sunglasses. And uh, so I started working out of my house and immediately... I devoted an hour every day to try to learn something new. And I was, you know, so I get on and there's so much online podcasts, you know, Uh, so I could just immediately find the expert in any field and just start studying. And I immediately got into like uh, philosophy. I don't know why I think because I didn't grow up going to a church Uh and just dug right into it. And, you know, Alan Watts, I would, I would work out and lift and run and, and just listening to Alan Watts and it blew my mind and it changed the way I look at things. And then I started looking into food and I, you know, I found a couple of people that I really respected and started learning about food. And then I, uh, one day I'll never forget it. I was, I was in my office, uh, packaging up the, you know, box after box of sunglasses that I was shipping out. And some, my buddy who's an ER doctor, he sent me a link to a Wim Hof interview. And I listened to it and I was like, whoa, like th- it really hit me. And I was like, what the heck has this guy got here? You know? So I, you know, I get online and I'm Googling around for months trying to figure out like, what the hell is this dude doing? Like, how is this working? I've never heard of this. Yeah. The guy's getting cold. He doesn't get sick. Yeah. Like he, he's in a great mood. Look at the dude, you know? So <laughs> totally. he's just so happy. It's like, I want whatever he's got. So I started getting cold too. And I was like, wow, you know, what the hell is happening? Uh-huh. And it just, it changed right there. And, you know, and I'm asking the doctor and he's like, I don't freaking know. And, you know, and I'm asking other people, and I don't know. And then one dude uh, on some Facebook post of Wim Hof's uh, Facebook page said something like Google Jack Cruz. So I Googled Jack Cruz. And all of a sudden, I was in this crazy world of like trying to figure out what melatonin is and like <laughs> endor- beta endorphins and all this stuff. And I'm like, what is going on? So, you know, I just I went full in like I just did a cannonball into the world of Jack Cruz and it just opened everything up. Yeah. And uh, and he was the first person that it could explain what getting cold could do to you. Yes. And. And then in learning that, I was like, dude, there's so much else, you know, now there's EMF and now that sunglasses are bad and it's like, what the hell is going on here? Now we got a black blue light and it's just like, whoa. And I feel like my whole world got turned upside down and I was just like, all right, let's go in, you know? So I I would print out, you know, his cold thermogenesis, you know, 17 blog posts on paper and I'd stay up, I'd stay up late reading them and I'd be like, my wife's like, what the hell are you doing? You know? And it's like, I don't know, but you know, something's pulling me to understand this stuff. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, and I would explain it to my friends. And I remember one night, I was probably a year, year and a half into this. And all I could think about was all this stuff I was learning. And I remember saying to myself, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what? I'm not unhealthy. Uh-huh. You no, know, I'm an athlete. I've been an athlete my whole life. Went to college, to play soccer. I'm in great shape, you know, my vision's fine. I don't wear glasses. Uh-huh. You know, I don't have the, I don't have any disease. Yeah. Why am I trying to learn so much about, you know, optimum health? It didn't make sense. And then all of a sudden, about a year ago to this date, this opera and I don't want to go too far into it, but this opportunity to get into red light uh presented itself and I was just like all over it. I was like, there's nothing gonna stop me from from doing this. I know the thing has no harm harmful side effects. 
yeah. I know it could benefit everyone in my family, uh, all of my friends. Like, this is what's missing from where we live. I live in Ohio, uh, Cincinnati, a little north of uh, Cincinnati. Okay. And we don't get the sun for, I mean, we can't make vitamin D for, from, what is it, November 21st to January 22nd or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I experimented with that, and it's like, but I couldn't afford, it didn't make sense to, you know, immediately buy an expensive red light. So I guess I, I should answer or end that, that question right there. But yeah, that's, that's Jack Cruz is definitely the dude that got me into it. He's not the only person I learned from, but he's definitely the person that got me, got my interest. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. He's definitely uh, been a big influence in my life as well. And, and my practice and, and then, you know, listening to him and branching out and, and then, getting into the research of, of Dr. Doug Wallace and then reading stuff like Fritz Hallwich and, and John Ott and all of their stuff has just been such a, provided such an opening for my, my own well being, but my healing practice as well. So that's really cool to hear this parallel that you have as well. Yeah. The John Ott book was great. That was probably my first book that I bought, you know, as a recommendation from, uh -huh. from Jack. And uh, it really hit a chord with me because I've been a photographer uh, ah. forever. And, you know, it was just like, okay, like, I know what you're talking about now. Like, I know how all of photography is about lighting. Yeah. And it's like, I, I get it. And, you know, yeah. from there, you know, obviously went into other books. But that was the first book I got that I just really fell in love with. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was one of my first reads as well. And for you listeners out there, the name of the book is called Health and Light by John Ott. And uh, I'll post a link in the show notes to that book for you all if you want to check it out. So this is really interesting because not only are you a pioneer in the red light therapy practice and followed your own passion and inner guidance on how to um, just come about offering this service to other people. So now you're your own, you work for yourself and what an amazing time in the world to have your own business. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on top of that, I actually have three. So I started my uh, sunglass company 10 years ago in 2010. And, uh, and obviously that changed everything for me because it, it allowed me to essentially be by myself and create my own thoughts and not be influenced by other people's energy and their motivations and their goals and all this stuff. Absolutely. And then it freed up time, like I said, to uh, spend time researching and, you know, pursue interests of my own that weren't, you know, forced or steered by other people. And uh, it was, yeah, it's just the most life changing thing ever. And uh, the other thing I'd like to mention on that is uh, it's an absolute trip to raise kids while you're doing your own thing. Like I, I can't, I couldn't have said that slower, but it's like, being able to show them that they can do whatever they carve out for themselves and, you know, and do it with pride. You know, it's, it's just the, it's a real pleasure. Like I feel so blessed every day. I, I do never, I never let that escape my thoughts. Like that's, I'm so lucky to have this. Oh, that's really sweet. So, so just because of the time we're in right now, um, how is it to be a parent right now at this time in history when we're kind of dealing with the COVID and everyone's at home and um, yeah. it's kind of a side topic, but I'm really curious. I think a lot of, yeah. people, I'm not a parent, but I know there's, you know, millions of people are. So yeah. how has this been for you and, and what's your experience been at this time? Yeah, it's, I guess I'm not a typical um person to ask that um i i'm a i'm i'm really an optimist on a lot of things yeah and uh, i like to think of all this as like the beginning of something that's going to be amazing Absolutely. Uh, it, very similar to a road trip you know you go on a road <laughs> trip and it's like the drive just freaking sucks getting there you know you couldn't get there fast enough and it's super boring uh -huh. and it's uncomfortable and you don't get to eat the same food and it's just but once you get there it's like oh my god like this this was totally worth it and you totally forget what happened on the drive yeah and, uh, i i honestly believe this is the biggest uh changing that we could have ever asked for uh, my hope and i believe and i could be totally wrong i've been totally wrong a lot of my life but 
is that I think people are going to actually give a shit about their health now. Like, I, I think know. they're going to think about what they're eating. I think they're going to think about where the food came from. Yes. I think the things that was wrong yesterday are going to be right tomorrow. Yeah. I think people are going to look at big companies as not the solution. I think they're going to look at their neighbor farm, you know, as the solution for their food. And I just, I think they're going to take their health. They're going to slow down. Like there's so many people that I've talked to, like my friends and stuff that are like, dude, I don't know what to do with myself right now. I know. And it's like, and I'm sitting there like, dude, nothing has changed. Like I, I literally <laughs> have the same thing going on. Like I wrote I that in one of my posts recently, like yeah. quarantine is not any different to me than it was prior. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. It's just a realization. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe that's one of the things I try to change. You know, maybe I try to, you know, make work feel more like work or something. I don't know. <laughs> but to answer your question, uh, I think this is an amazing ex experience to share with our kids. And me personally, I'm explaining to them what a virus is. I didn't even really know. Like, I didn't know it was not a living thing. I assumed you had to kill the thing by putting alcohol on it. I, I didn't know that it was just, a, you know, a series of amino acids that need to be broken down and that the sun can do that. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's basic shit. And it's it's nothing. It's no boogeyman. That's right. If we did what the rest of the world did and just wore masks, there, there'd be no problem right here. Just don't stick your finger in your eye, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you're good. But for whatever reason, our society is not into wearing masks. I think that's going to be something that changes. And, uh, you know, whether I supply the mask or somebody else does, I think people are going to understand that if I just wear this mask in a large group of people, whether they're sick or I'm sick, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think it's, um, people think it's revolutionary to, to, if you're sick, stay at home. And, um, I think if we, yeah. just follow, if we just follow that general rule, like on an everyday basis, if you're sick, Hey, you know, maybe cancel your trip or stay at home yeah. could be, uh, uh, really helpful as well. Yeah. I hope this inspires kids to be doctors. I hope this inspires kids to solve problems. And that's one of the things I always say to my kids is like, you know, what we're looking for is not just another worker. We're looking for people to solve the problems, name a problem, and then let's sit down and try to talk about how we can solve it. And, uh, you know, one of the, the drawings that my son had recently, he's eight, uh, is trying to solve the plastic in the ocean problem. And he's drawing these, these little submarine hose, suction hoses on his paper and, you know, making them put labels on it. And it's, I don't know, I think this is a great opportunity for these kids to like, change the future and i think this example if you know hopefully it doesn't come and go too fast honestly yeah i i don't think it will we're, we're gonna need a lot of uh innovators um in in your children's generation so um absolutely absolutely i think that's a great point so you mentioned an awesome point about sunlight uh, one of the big messages i'm trying to put out there now is all the research, even the science, you can't deny that vitamin D, um, the higher vitamin D level, the less susceptible you are to infectious disease and all chronic disease. Yeah. And we make vitamin D from, from sunlight. And it's no doubt that light plays a huge role in our biology and um, our biochemistry. And so tell me a little bit about what you've learned and I know you've got some really great blog posts on your site as well about different topics and how to apply red light to specific ailments but but tell me a little bit about some of the healing benefits you found red light to really offer yeah absolutely I, I guess that's kind of two things one talking about UVB and vitamin D I think everybody should know that vitamin D is extremely important for your health and, you know, your immune system. But I honestly don't know that people do. No, I don't think they do at all. You're right. Absolutely. And I might be, you know, uh, getting a weird perspective where based on where I live, I'm kind of, you know, north of the city. We're near suburbs. It's fairly wealthy here. Everybody's pretty comfortable and stuff. And uh, I, everybody's kind of on their gadgets and stuff. Like right now, for example, people should be outside laying in the yard, getting their sun up. Absolutely. Because it's spring, you you live somewhere where it's sunny probably more often than it is here. Today it's a beautiful day. It's maybe fifty five, and you know I had to go to, to a grocery store earlier, and I didn't see anybody outside on the way. And me and my kids and family have been laying out in the yard 
for the last week. Anytime the sun's out, it's like we're it's like we're turtles laying out there just sunning. <laughs> Cause we can't go anywhere. You know what I mean? We're kind of stuck here. Yes. So Yes. We should be in Florida. That's where we're supposed to be. We had to cancel our uh our spring break down there. Oh yeah. Okay. So I figured I figured out years ago, uh I, I say that like it was a long time ago, uh, a couple of years ago, that the solution based on my latitude was to load up on vitamin D prior to the end of our um, UVB, you know, uh, ending at, in the late, uh, what is it, the 21st of November. If you can load up on it, we can make it healthy to Christmas time. And then we do a trip down to Florida, spend a week down there, get as much sun then, and then we can make it to spring break. Uh, UVB, um, if you get enough vitamin D and you're somewhat healthy, you can hold it for about two months. And, uh, and since I started implementing this about two years ago with my family, uh, my daughter stopped getting sick. Uh, my son doesn't get sick. Um, my wife will get sick here and there, but it's, it's very obvious that it's stress related at the times that she has gotten sick and which isn't much. And I haven't been sick and uh, I'm almost four years in. So, but I, uh, there's a couple of other tricks that I've learned that, um, that help you not get sick. Hopefully I'm not getting off topic. It just seems relevant to the times right now is uh, I started meditating about less than four years ago on the daily. And uh, yeah, I, I haven't been sick since the day I started counting daily meditations and uh, I've been trying to answer that one, and I haven't found anybody to answer that for me. <laughs> the closest I've gotten was a dude, uh, Molly, and I can't remember his name, on Instagram. They had some handle that had to do with sleep. They were awesome. They haven't posted in a while. But either way, he, he mentioned that he believed that uh, vitamin C is recycled when you meditate. Interesting. So I've been, I was up last night looking for the answer to that because somebody else brought it up and uh, I don't know, but that's something I'm curious about. So if anybody knows anything about that, I'd love to find out. To get back to your question, I don't know that people know and uh, about vitamin D and how, how important it is to us. Um, my goal for next winter is to try to get some prototype uh, vitamin D lamps, which would be UVB bulbs. So my buddy that that runs a manufacturing place here in Cincinnati used to make the, the housings for the Spurdy lamps, which is my understanding, you know, the, the kind of go to lamp that you should be getting, I think it runs about 500 bucks. But my goal was to try to reach out to that company and just kind of see um, what they know, and if they're willing to share any information, because I think, you know, that would pair nicely with what I'm providing now which is the other end of the spectrum. Absolutely. And just to give our listeners some, some context here on these frequencies that actually come from the sun, like you're mentioning the UVB light, which we use to make vitamin D. Also, let's get into red light a little bit because we know that 42% of sunlight is red light and you offer some really awesome red light therapies on your site. So Maybe yeah. let's just start by describing what what is red light for somebody who's like, what are they talking about? We got UVB light. He's yep. offering red light. Yep. What is red light? I feel like if I can't describe it to my kids, then it doesn't like I don't really I'm not describing it well. So the way I describe it to the kids is in the colors of the rainbow, you got essentially blue on one side and red on the other side. And those colors, though, we see them as colors, and we believe that's all they exist as, they're actually uh, wavelengths or waves of energy, all right? And blue, which is on one side, has a very short energetic wave of energy. And then red has a longer, less powerful energy, mm -hmm. right? And then on the outside of those, we have things that we can't see with our eyes. Uh, one is UV, which will give you a suntan, right. will give you vitamin D, keep you healthy. And then on the other side is something we, we can't uh, perceive, can't see with our eyes, and that's infrared. And closest to red, the infrared doesn't put off really any heat. You get farther from that, and it's more like a sauna, so it's, it's pretty warm. And uh, if you can get close to the red and the near-infrared, 
and those are the two wavelengths that we provide in our lights, uh, it, it essentially charges the energy making areas of our body, our cells. When, it, when you get down to the smallest parts of the body, it, it's your cell. And for whatever reason, part of the energy making areas of your cell, they just love red light and they love near infrared light. And it, it allows you to uh, sometimes bring those cells back if they've been damaged or just make them optimal. And uh, I believe, you know, from the stuff that I've read, we're supposed to absorb this light. I think it's, it's meant for us. The, uh, the reason we don't have fur all over us like gorillas and animals and dogs and stuff is because we're supposed to absorb this, these frequencies for our health. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one thing to read and hear about. But then once you start implementing it, it becomes pretty obvious that it does work. Yes. Um, but just like anything, I always try to tell people, Sure, it's good for you, but anytime you do something that's good for you, you do it too much, it doesn't become good for you. Absolutely. It actually becomes bad for you. And I don't care if that's eating your favorite food or exercising or getting sun. Like, yeah, vitamin D is great for you from the sun, UVB rays, but if you get too much of it, it's really bad for you. And as far as red light, it can be bad for you as well, but it's definitely not even close to the harm that you would get from the UV side of the spectrum, the, you know, the other end of the spectrum. So, and that was one of the things that I had to really look into uh, before I started selling these was, you know, I don't want to sell because the first people that I'm going to sell these to are my family and friends. And I don't want to put something in their hands that could harm them. Absolutely. And uh, so I, I really investigated that as much as possible. And one of the things that I do with my lights is, uh, I try to explain to people how to use these things, you know, in a safe manner. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah, I, I started this company uh, almost a year ago to the date. It was early April. And uh, I started it and I didn't know, um, like, how well this would work. Because a lot of the initial people, like I said, family and friends that I was mentioning this to, um, they're looking at me like, why would shining a colored light do anything beneficial for me? <laughs> like it just it was too far out of their reach initially yes. and uh yes but now that I'm a year in uh, about halfway through that year things just really kicked in the gear and people started getting and I started noticing that people outside of my influence were understanding it and mentioning it so it was like something's going on uh in the industry like people are catching on um in this coronavirus deal uh I think it's only gonna spread these types of solutions, these non-harmful solutions that we can do that, that take, you know, you don't have to go run five miles to shine a red light on. You just turn it on. It's like the easiest thing you can do that has the greatest influence on your health. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I know. I, I completely agree. And um, so I want to go back to the blue light that you mentioned, but before we go there, because we're kind yeah. of on the trail to the health benefits of red light, what yeah. are some benefits that you know of that red light can offer? You talked about energy production at the cellular level. Yes. And what are some other, like if someone out there is like, okay, what would I actually use this for? Why would right. I buy a red light device? You know, what, what are the benefits here? And that's where it got weird. And that was the <laughs> first half. That was the first half of last year. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm sitting around like, all right, so it's good for your skin. It's good for your collagen. It's good for, let's say, tendonitis, arthritis. It's good for injuries. It's good for post-surgery. It's good for, you know, I just started naming off all these things, and I'm writing them down. And I'm like, how the hell am I going to sell this to anybody? It sounds like, it, you know, it's too good to be true. And a lot of my close friends were saying that. They're like, dude, I don't believe you. Like just the way you're naming all the things that it's good for you. I know it, you know, it's, it's a snake oil. Yes. And it got really weird because I felt obligated to tell everybody all of the things it could do. Yet it came across too good to be true. So yeah, what I ended up having to do the second half is just pick a handful of those things okay. and focus on them. And the way I, I picked those things were essentially what, what are most people fall, what category do most people fall into? Uh -huh. 
and it was very obvious. Um, there seems to be people that are injured. Yes. Whether and that main injury is usually a lower back issue. Mm -hmm. And then you got the people that just had surgery. And then you got the people that have been, you know, hurt their knee shoulder years ago, and it just never got better. Yeah. So those people were kind of the low hanging fruit. And then on the other side of things was people uh, that are trying to I'm not crazy about the term anti-aging, but everybody knows what it means. Yes. People looking to look more youthful as they get older. So like, you know, if you're doing things that just destroy your collagen, yes. you know, you're going to look old real fast. And one way to slow that down is to put this red light on your skin. It's very beneficial. It's very noticeable. You can cut your hand or your arm or something and use the light on it. Um, I've had open wounds on myself that I put the light on and it just stopped the wound and immediately started scabbing. It was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, yeah, I've had some crazy like self examples of how well this light works. Um, yes. But then, you know, after it happens, I try to tell people and they're like, well, yeah, but you're the salesperson, you know? Yes. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I, I've been blown away by it. Um, but yeah, so those were kind of the two areas that I focused on. But um one thing I was really concerned about initially was, do I tell people to, to wear goggles or not? Like, because I don't want people harming their eyes. I'm, I seem like a very sensitive thing. Yes. So I would contact all the, you know, other companies doing this. And they were all saying, you don't need to wear goggles. You know, you don't even need to close your eyes. Just don't stare directly into the bulb. Yeah. And you should be fine. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I just don't feel safe telling my mom that, you know? Yeah, sure. So I did more research and more research and, and about halfway through last year, I came to the conclusion like, look, this is actually beneficial. There's too many studies showing that it's good for your eyes. Yeah. It's one of the few things that like helps from blue light damage. It's right. one of the few things that helps with uh, like cataracts and stuff like that, macular degeneration and stuff, right. which seems to be caused by, you know, excessive energy efficient lights that are everywhere now. And, Yes. I took that off kind of the instructions that you have to wear the glasses or the goggles, sorry. I think that's great. And, you know, I think you bring up a good point that in the beginning you were talking about how, how red and blue are kind of on opposite ends or red is the antidote to blue, you know? And so a lot of people today are totally blue light toxic. They're in front of a screen, they're, yeah. they're under LED lights, they're under fluorescent lights and all these things. Oh, yeah primarily blue light. And so we're highly red light deficient and blue light toxic. And so at least at this point in, in history, we need all the red light we can get. <laughs> I want to take a second to provide you all with an amazing resource that you can access right now to help block all the junk light, the artificial light, everything in that blue and green spectrum that you look at throughout your day. By doing so, you'll start to improve your sleep, your energy levels, and healing potential. Head over to MidwestRedLightTherapy.com and pick up a pair of their blue light blocking glasses. I've personally tried different brands of blue blocking glasses and love the glasses Kyle offers over at Midwest Red Light Therapy. I wear the night prowlers every day when I'm working in front of a screen, when I'm under fake light out in the world, such as at a restaurant, when I'm driving in my car and it's nighttime and you know other cars lights are flashing in my face, even when I go to the grocery store, I wear these glasses. And the night prowlers block the detrimental man-made green and blue light, which is gonna preserve your melatonin levels and your circadian biology. When you preserve your melatonin levels, you sleep like a baby and you can run the vital cellular regeneration programs of autophagy and apoptosis, which PS is huge for cancer patients and your energy levels will start to improve simply by wearing the night prowler blue blocking glasses when under junk light. So head over to MidwestRedLightTherapy.com Grab a pair of the night prowlers and don't forget to use the code SUNLIGHTRX at checkout to save on your purchase. Now, back to the interview to learn more about red light. One of the topics I feel like I, I'm, I don't want to use the word preaching, but I'm trying to educate people on is this wasn't like this before. And what changed is LED lights. Like 
we've completely changed our lights in the whole world. I mean, it, they've become this energy efficient. Everybody thinks you're saving money, but it's like, yeah, that's kind of how they hook you. But what's going on is, is you know, we're, oh, we're isolating one part of the spectrum and that, si- that part of the spectrum is fine uh, if it's like early in the day like or noon, but do that after dinner, you don't need that spectrum in your eyes. Like that's the last thing you need. And, you know, I've been trying over the last year to, to break that down for people in the simplest form. But I start with saying that, look, our lights were not like this. Like they didn't start out this way when we were growing. I'm, I'm a little older, but when we were growing up, it was incandescent, you know, and those were fine. Those were, those honestly weren't that bad. That's right. Yeah. But uh, now everybody's got this LED screen that they, they literally have in their hand, in their face, as they're laying in bed. And it's not great. So blue isn't, isn't the devil. Like blue is, is, it's gotten a bad rap by a lot of people, but it's really not that bad. It's just, it's all about timing, man. That's a great way to put it. It's all about timing. That's, that's you know, absolutely because in the sun, when, when's blue light? present especially right at sunrise when red or blue are together and that really stimulates yeah. the release of hormones from the anterior pituitary and so this is a beneficial thing but then exactly like you're saying when you're still looking at blue light after the sun sets and there's no more light present you're still releasing those hormones from your anterior pituitary because blue gives it that signal blue light stimulates that and so then you're going to create everything from poor sleep to you're not going to be recycling your melatonin and you're going to be more inflamed and then be more prone to chronic diseases. So this is, um, I think this is really great for people to hear that. Yeah. So one of the things that I teach my kids and it's extremely obvious to see, like I learned this obviously from Jack. One of the first things that I started doing is wake up, go stand outside for the sunrise. And the thing that was extremely noticeable for me and then watching my kids starting to do it is it immediately wakes you up. Like when you walk outside and that sun pops up, even if it's not in direct, you know, line of your eyes, it's still bright as shit. And that immediately releases cortisol, which is kind of your stress hormone, which is extremely necessary for you to wake the hell up. Exactly. If you don't, if you walk into your living room and turn your lights on, sure, you can see around the room and it seems bright. But when you compare the brightness of that room to what's going on outside in your backyard where the sun's rising, there's no comparison. So you are supposed to wake up and have that cortisol wake you up and then it releases all the hormones, you know, and starts your day. That timing of blue light is perfect. But if you don't go outside until noon or something, then it's like uh, that begins to be the beginning of your day at noon. So then obviously you're not ready to go to bed, you know, at 10 or whatever you're going to bed at. So blue light's great. Blue light's amazing. But it's all about timing. And when you eat matters, when you see light matters, you know, when you go to bed matters. But the term that everybody's now figuring out is circadian rhythm. And now that, you know, we've learned about circadian rhythm, one of the best books that I read in the last year or two, Circadian Code by Sachin Panda, it just spells it out for you. And it explains that, you know, blue isn't the devil, though it is at night, you know. And uh, I don't know, it's, that's, that's one thing that's been really interesting to see is, you know, if you can't afford a red light or you, you can't afford this or that, you know, just go outside and watch the sunrise. It's, it's so beneficial Uh, other than waking up like waking you up immediately it makes you in a great mood I mean it's it's just it's extremely noticeable that your mood's different when you watch the sunrise yeah that's a great point and and I feel the same thing since watching the sunrise it's like you know sometimes you be like oh it's taking me forever to wake up it's noon and I still feel sleepy and I'm still groggy if you're standing out in the sunlight and and when the sun's rising, you're absolutely right. Have the same exact experience. You you feel awake. You feel ready to go. You feel vibrant just from you know watching sun, the sunrise on a continuous basis. So I think that's great for people to hear because a lot of people struggle with energy levels, especially in waking up first thing in the morning. I mean, that's that's oh yes, it's very noticeable with my kids. Like. You know, the last couple of weeks we've been in this kind of quarantine and though I see them on the weekends, I don't really, you know, push them to do too much in the weekends because, you know, they, they're waking up early and we're seeing the sunrise out at the bus stop and this and that. But yeah. you know, in the last couple of weeks, it's like it, 
they're wanting to stay up, you know, 10, 15 minutes later every night. Uh Uh, And then they're, you know, starting to miss the sunrise and it, they'll just lay around kind of lethargic. These are active, healthy kids, you know, it's just because they're not getting out in the sun. So the last, you know, last couple days I've been like, you have to see the sunrise. You can, you can have the damn ice cream, but you got to go see the sun. <laughs> like it, like video. seriously, that's more, that trumps everything. If you can yeah. watch the sunrise, you'll go to bed at, when you're supposed to. Yes. Yes. Completely agree. I like that. It's a good trade off there. <laughs> so that's awesome. Thanks for talking about the, the benefits there, the red light. And um, I want to go into uh, blue light a little bit in here because yeah, blue light, we need it. There's a lot of stuff on how blue light is bad, which it is, especially when we look at our devices all day. We're not going outside. There's no red light in our devices. Yep. And um, you have some really great uh, blue blue blocking glasses on your site. I think you have a Frank the Tank and the Night Prowler. Is that, is that accurate, the two blue blockers? Yes. Yeah, and honestly, I don't think I have them appropriately priced. I've always felt weird about when I price something and then go in and changing it. I've always felt like that, you know, somebody saw it and they're saving their money and then all of a sudden I change it. It's like, ah, it just doesn't feel like fair practice. But the $20 red lens Frank the Tank Insomnias are the best entry level red lens glasses I think you can get. Will they last you a year or two? It matters how you treat them. Uh-huh. I, I think that's the safe way to put that. Sure. But uh, I will say this, two things. One is the orange lens pair that I now sell for 30. I should be selling those for way more. They're made out of uh, this TR90 material that's extremely flexible. It's They boast, the manufacturer boasts that you can't break it, but I'm not trying. Uh, I just like them too much. They're super lightweight. Uh, the lens on it is just amazing. Uh, I've sent that specific pair to um, Anthony G back to test with his you know $3,000 spectrometer and it, it did in fact block 99% of the blue or, or whatever and those are the pair I wear every day I, I absolutely love those I wear them from when I wake up I literally reach on my nightstand put them on walk downstairs I get up at about 6 30 the sun doesn't come up till about 7 30 right now so I wear them for the first hour I take them off as I'm walking outside and then uh, after the sun sets I put them on and wear them until bed and uh they're crazy because uh, like my eyes will start watering um, without me yawning, without any other signals that my body's slowing down, my eyes will just start watering. Interesting. And it's like, I know that my melatonin is starting to be released. It's the weirdest thing, man. I've, <laughs> I'm totally, I'm totally addicted to wearing these, but I've went through, uh, obviously I own a sunglass company. I, I've went through tons of different prototypes and pairs that I've sold over the years. And this is probably my favorite one. It's called the night prowler. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I, I should probably sell them for more, but I, I think what I'm going to do is sell the rest of this batch, Yeah. which I think I have a couple hundred more. And yeah. then after that, I'm going to replace them with a different name. <laughs> uh-huh. So I do like the Night Prowlers and then probably raise the price. But either way, my goal here is to, to sell some entry level priced uh, blue light blockers uh-huh. and, uh, for people to have. The red lens pair, I, I tend to only advise people that are struggling to sleep. Yes. Um, The orange are perfect. Um, The red are a little hard to get used to um, because it it literally blocks all blue and all blue, all blue and all green colors. Yes. So it's weird thing. If you've never had a pair of blue light blockers, don't get the red ones (laughs) because then you're not going to wear them that much. Yes. Uh, Get the orange ones. You'll wear them every day. And then if you're still struggling to sleep, then get the red ones. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm very, um, I feel very blessed to be able to offer those at those prices right now because yeah. uh, a handful of the other companies that, you know, I'm very aware of that are selling it, they're great quality, but they're really expensive. And, uh, and if you've never owned a pair, like at least try them out before you invest, you know, 200 bucks into something that you're not sure you're going to wear. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I have the night prowlers on right now. I wear them every day. And before this, oh, nice. um, I am, I don't want to out anyone, but I I, ha- I bought a very expensive pair of blue blockers. I don't know, like 150 bucks from nice. um, from a different company. And honestly, the the night prowlers I have on right now that I just got from you, 
they're much more durable and I feel like they even block more of the blue light than the expensive pair. So I'm like, I mean the really expensive pair. So, um, oh, nice. I can say that these are awesome. They're now the, the glasses that I recommend to all my clients, my friends, my family, they want blue blockers. I said, you got to go here, get the night prowlers. And, oh, thank you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're amazing. You, it's a great product. I'm not, I'm not just saying it's why I wanted to have you on the show because a lot of the other products, the glasses just don't have the integrity that I'm feeling like these do. And they're blocking blue light. They're doing the job like really well. Um, and, and for the people I work with who are really sick, like uh, my cancer clients or autoimmune clients, like I'm like, listen, I, I think you need to have both the Night Prowler and Frank the Tank. But really, if you can wear Frank the Tank as much as you can, especially if you're super sick, um, I think that's uh, that's something I've been recommending to my clients. So I think they're great products. I think you you've done a, uh, it's obvious you did a lot of homework and uh, put together really great quality products. So I appreciate that and hope a lot of people continue to benefit from that. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate hearing that. that. Yeah, it makes me happy. Absolutely. So. Now, for somebody who's like, okay, what are these blue blockers? It's cool. I'm getting a feel for the difference between them, uh, the two that you, you're you offering. Um, why would somebody wear these glasses? Like, let's just go there and help somebody uh, break it down a little bit. Yeah, why would you wear them? I, I guess um, the low-hanging fruit on that is because people want to look at their screens and uh, before they go to bed. So your two options here, don't look at any screens for two hours before you go to bed or three. It depends on how strict you want to be or wear something that blocks out the blue wavelength. And the reason why is because like I, that book I mentioned, Circadian Code, we, I could name all kinds of references. There's just so much uh, evidence nowadays that we have uh, blue light sensors in our eyes. And the specific purpose there is to see the sunrise and then release cortisol. And amongst other things, but it's supposed to stress your body into being awake. If you had no stress, you would just go to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's just obvious. So people are getting the stress from blue light before bed. And they're saying that it takes about three hours of blocking blue before your body starts releasing melatonin. And my understanding, and I'm not an expert on this, is that you could literally wear, say, these red lens in the middle of the day and three hours later start, you know, unnecessarily releasing melatonin. So you need to have some stimulation via light throughout the day. And then it's after the sun sets is when you're supposed to start blocking it. Yeah. And I dabbled, you know, with doing it only on certain nights. I would do it on nights that I worked out or I would do it, you know, on certain nights and not do it on other nights. And uh, I found that being more consistent personally was the way to go. Um, it just kind of got your body in the cycle, the rhythm, if you will. And uh, it made it easier. One of the things that I noticed that I thought caught me off guard a little bit, because I, you know, I read a little bit about it, but I didn't quite believe it was, it changes your appetites. Like, uh, especially the times you're hungry, there's something to do with your appetite that's tied in with this rhythm. And uh, like, I don't, I don't have any urge to eat after dinner anymore. And I used to always have this urge to eat, you know, within an hour before bed. So I'd eat, say at six, and then go to bed at say 1030. Right around nine, I was always hungry. And since I started wearing these frequently, you know, almost on a daily basis, uh, I don't get that hunger anymore. It's, it's bizarre. And then, you know, I'm hungry a half an hour after the sunrise. So it's like always, it's just more, more regular. And I think the more regular you can be on whatever you're doing, I think the, the better for your body um, and obviously longevity and stuff. But yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think like a, a lot of more people are hearing or are starting to hear, you know, studies are starting to come out linking. You, you don't even have to change your diet you can simply look at non-native blue light or artificial light and um become obese or overweight and so oh yeah this is a link i don't think people they can't this that doesn't make linear sense to people so they have a hard time connecting the dots um, absolutely but it, so it's great to hear like this this one single change like you simply wore your night prowlers after sunset 
and you started to notice and watch the sunrise the next morning and you started to notice your appetite change. That's huge. That single thing alone is so huge for anyone struggling with weight, obesity, or, you know, eating late at night. That's really huge. Yeah. And what's weird is I could say that stuff to people, but it still doesn't hit people. Like it doesn't, I don't, and I'm not sure why, maybe because there is, it, it's an unknown connection. Like it's not linear, like you said it, but I don't get, like, I could set that, say that to so many people. I have friends that are like telling me, like, I can't settle my mind down as I'm going to bed. And it's, yeah. I'm like, dude, it's light. Like, yeah. and they don't believe me. And it's yeah. like, take a pair of these glasses, wear them, you know, <laughs> prove to me that I'm wrong. You know, I want you to prove me I'm wrong, wear them, but they won't. So it's just like, whatever. Yeah. You, know, you can lead the horse to water, but you know, people think there's, it's got to be a bigger fix. Like That's it can't right. just be that simple. It's got to be something that the doctor, you know, prescribed. It's got to cost a lot of money. It, yes. Like, no, man, it's not. It, yeah. Just go watch the sunrise and then black your blue at night. Basically. Yeah, I know. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre. And I guess I want to immediately it popped into my head. When I started on this whole journey, you know, I started reading Jack's stuff and other people's stuff and I had a lot of questions. One, are you still getting the sunrise benefits if it's cloudy? Uh -huh. Like I never, I never could figure that out. It was, and I, that was so important to me. Cause it's like, I'm gonna wake up early. I'm gonna go stand in the backyard. It's 14 yeah. degrees. Yes. Am I getting the benefits? You know? Uh -huh. And uh, the answer after two years of doing this is yes, you are. And it's pretty easy to test that. It's about Lux. Lux is the brightness of the lights. And that's what it is. It's, you don't have to be staring directly into the belly of the sun for you to get these benefits. Yeah, it's going to be better if you are, but you, there's so many benefits to just being outside at the time the sun rises. Absolutely. Yeah. So, the, you know, I tell a lot of my customers because they all ask, can I just get the benefits of red light therapy from the sun? And I said, yes, you can. Yeah. But, but you're not going to be naked in January, you know, you're not going to be naked anytime in your backyard. And <laughs> even if, you know, say you're, it's just your shoulder, you know, you're not going to go spend 30 minutes out in the sun uh, at sunrise with your shoulder exposed, you know, seven months of the year where you can do this in your office. You can do it, you know, in, in your closet, you can do it in the privacy of your home. And that's kind of what the whole point of this is. You can focus the energy that is near infrared and red light into your shoulder that you injured or, you know, yes, and into all different important parts of your body, your spine, your knee, you know, it's, it's great. And it, you can do it in, at your leisure, essentially. Absolutely. So, so let's go into that a little bit about the, the red light devices you offer. You know, I know when um, there's a lot of different options right now out there today for photo yes. biomodulation or red light therapy. And so I'm very curious, you know, because even some of the really awesome ones, you know, have, let's say, like a lot of flicker associated with it. And that's something we really want to keep low when we're seeking out a really good quality red light or photobiomodulation device. So tell me a little bit about your products and, you know, maybe the difference in some of the products you offer because people are out there shopping around, like you said, some people are going to want to keep their jobs nine to five. They're not going to have time to be out in the sun, but they want to get the benefits of red light. So investing in a red light device could be really helpful for them. So tell us a little bit about the devices you offer and some of the benefits. Absolutely. Yeah. So when I started this whole thing, obviously, I learned about the importance of sunrise. And then we headed right in the winter and it was like, all right, I'm not getting any direct light. You're, it's great for waking me up. Like we were saying, uh, get my hormones going, this and that, but it's not doing any kind of anti-aging. It's not recovering muscles after I work out. It's not doing a lot of the things I wanted right? because we're in winter and we're in a Northern latitude environment. So I went on Amazon, like everyone's going to do when they're first interested in something and, and you're going to get some products that are pretty cheap. Um, uh, you know, both in price and both in quality. So the first thing I did was I bought a, um, a thermo bulb. It's uh, 20 bucks. It's a uh, near infrared kind of a, and I think it even goes in. So it's red near infrared and it goes in the mid infrared. I believe it might even go into some far. I, I can't remember off the top of my head what spectrum it goes to, 
but it's got more of a, a, a broader range. You know, it's not just an isolated spectrum. I bought one of those and I bought the little lamp for it. I had probably 45, 50 bucks in one bulb, you know, with the, the 125 watt lamp thing. And I would stand in front of it and I was like, this is absolutely amazing. Like, I love it. Like, I would sit there for 25 minutes at about 12 inches away. I did all the math, you know, based, you know, contacted the company to find out the irradiance of it, which is strength, and then found the distance and calculated. There's a little uh, equation you could plug in to figure out, you know, essentially what your dose is. And, um, and I was just, I was in love with it. But I would sit there, like I said, for 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes of my day. And most people don't have that time. But since I work for myself, um, you know, I would, it was called work now. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I loved it, man. And it was unbelievable. So then I saved up a little money about a month or two later, I bought a second one. And I had two of these huge red bulbs shining on me. Okay. And yes, there's some difference between those and the ones you buy at the, you know, the Home Depot store. But either way, it, it's pumping out. And then I really started reading about, you know, the real proven wavelength that, that people have been testing. You're not getting that much out of these thermobulbs. But you are getting more of a broad spectrum, which is great. It worked. Uh, I, I started noticing some of the sunspots on my, the back of my hands and on my face were starting to go down. I, I felt like some of the, the fine lines around my, like the crow, crow's feet, I think you call it. Uh -huh. around my face was very noticeably changing. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Like I got two months in this 30 minutes a day and this is great. And then I was like, okay, I want to cut down the amount of time that I'm spending doing this. Like this is, this is a job right now. And uh, so I went and bought one of the led ones on Amazon. You know, it was, I can't remember what the price was, but it's a handheld one. It comes with a long cord. I was like, this is great. It's a hundred, you know, milliwatts per centimeter squared. That's really strong. You know, that's what some of these big full body panels are doing. I, so I bought it. I was stoked. I started using it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was using it on my lower back because uh -huh. it was sore from doing something stupid, I'm sure. And <laughs> all of a sudden, I felt this like jolt, uh -huh. like in my in my spinal column area. Wow. And I hopped up and I looked at the thing and I was like, what the hell was that? And then I was like, I need an EMF meter. EMF meter. So oh, I yeah. ended up, yeah, I ended up getting an EMF meter and testing it. And I was like, oh my God, man, for this thing to be therapeutic, you have to be within a certain range. You can't stand, have it on one side of the room and then stand on the other side of the room and get the benefits. Yeah. They drop off really fast. So you got to be within six to eight inches of this thing. Yes. And then you're just getting blasted by EMF. Uh -huh. And I don't know if I'm more sensitive than other people. I don't really care, but I know it's not safe being there, yes. and especially for any amount of time on a daily basis. So I ended up returning the thing, and you definitely don't want to be holding the hand, like holding the light. And all the pictures on Amazon are showing people holding the light. Yeah. So I've tried to share that knowledge, but it gets weird coming from somebody who's selling a different light. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. But whatever. So I returned that light, got the money back. And then I'm sitting there like, all right, I need to figure out how to do this. And uh -huh. uh, I need to get a, a, a real light, you know, and, and go from there. So that led me into essentially looking at all the competitors out there. Okay. Uh, you know, and I don't want to name the names, but sure. we all know who the other companies are. Yes. And I started comparing them. and then. You know, this is where the background of my other job that I've been doing, I've been managing, uh, you know, contacts with manufacturers for many years. Uh -huh. um, I ended up reaching out to some manufacturers and saying, hey, can you build exactly what I want? And they're like, yeah, yeah sure. So I ordered some, got them in. And then here I am sitting there with a bunch of them like, all right, wow. how am I going to sell these? Like, I got to explain to people. You know, so I would just go around my friends and try to explain to them, you know, why they could use this and why they could benefit from them. And uh, a lot of them, like I said, were like, yeah, I'm not, not falling for that one. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So I think the, the big piece, and it sounds like that you've done around the research around your, your devices versus some of the other ones is one just from looking on your site and reading some of the stuff is that the flicker rate is, rate is like super, super low. Yeah, so I, I was really, uh, really into 
to the flicker. Uh, Jack talks a lot about the flicker. Yeah. Um, flicker is a really interesting topic. It really is. Um, if you've noticed on my web or on my Instagram, uh -huh. I mentioned that it has no flicker, but I don't really explain why. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be the dude that's selling you product after he scared you about something. Like that's, <laughs> that's not my goal. Like my goal is to like get people to be healthier and yeah. to create love and share love and stuff like that. It's not, I, I know what sells products. I've sold sunglasses for 10 years, sure. sex and fear. Those are the two things. If you want to make money, uh -huh. scare the shit out of somebody and then shows, you know, show some skin. Those are the two ways to make money. <laughs> and I've tried to not go that route. Like it, yeah. it's really hard. I'm more conscious of it because I'm raising kids. Yeah. But I'd rather make less money than to do those two routes. And there's a lot of that going on right now, specifically one aspect of it. And uh, I'm just not playing that game. But yes, I've made a point to sell lights that do not flicker. I've gotten samples from the manufacturer that did flicker. They told me they didn't. I tested them. They didn't. We sent them back. So that's something I, I believe in. Um, not all the companies that are selling them right now um, sell lights that, that don't flicker. Um, one company even has a really smart dude uh, that I really trust and believe. And he says flicker doesn't do anything. So it's like, ah, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's horrible and it's the end of the world. I'm just going to say I'm not putting it on my family, you know. I wouldn't like, put it on my family either. If you could test it yeah. for yourself, like look at a light that's that's I mean, you could be extreme, like we can get extreme cases of flicker like the kids who watched yes. Pokémon and then got seizures. It's like that's yeah. enough to tell me that uh, yeah. flicker is is a no-go in my house and I won't recommend it. So Yeah. So the people that say that there's nothing wrong with it, they say it happens to a, a select group of people. Uh, they call it something to do with helicopter. Like, so if you're in a helicopter and the blade's above you, the sun's above the blades. Yes. It's the same thing when you're driving down the road. It's about 6 o'clock and there's a line of trees between you and the, and the sun. Sure. It's that thing. It's the same thing. I yeah. mean, it's not comfortable driving you know, with the sun and the trees. It's not comfortable with the blade, helicopter blade above you. Right. To me, it's noticeable. I believe some of the stuff that I've read about it. Um, but like I said, not everybody believes it. And I'm not going to sit here and tell people that it's, it's good or bad for them. I'm just going to produce and provide the things that I believe are safe for me and my family. So That's awesome. Well, I think it's bad for you. I'll, I'll say it. And I, <laughs> you know, I know that yep. you have a product that you're behind. And I, I respect that there's no flicker in your devices. And it sounds like... You've also done a lot of, you put a lot of effort and time and thought and testing into the EMF side, which not everyone does who's in the photobiomodulation um, world. And so this, I feel like is absolutely crucial. Like you don't want to be standing in front of light and getting, and getting blasted by EMFs when you're trying to do a healing practice. So, um, yeah, most people don't know what EMFs are and it's a huge issue right now. It's a huge issue. And I'm, like I said, I don't want to scare people or anything. That's not my point here. But uh, it's definitely something that no one knows about, no one's testing for, and it's got a huge impact Yes. on all kinds of things. It, the most low-hanging fruit there is energy. I mean, if you get zapped, if you sit in front of something that's zapping you with its electromagnetic frequencies, your energy will drop. And if your energy drops, your thinking drops. If your thinking drops, your decisions drop. And once your decisions drop, it's all over. I mean, you're just, what, what good are you? You know what I mean? Yes. So it's, EMS is a very dangerous thing and it's becoming more common because every, you know, we're moving into this 5G world and autonomous coffee makers and just all kinds of everything is connecting with everything else. So yeah. it's, uh, it's an important topic. Um, yeah. You know, I don't want to sell EMF meters. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Cause I don't want to have to talk about that every day. Yeah. Um, Cause it's scary, man. It is. It's, it's intense. And, and, you know, I'm also finding most people don't know what EMFs are. And I feel like uh, for those of you listening, we're going to get into a lot more of the basics there to help teach you about what EMFs are and how you can work with those. Um, because it's just, we're kind of indoctrinated with non-native EMFs from um, 
on our planet right now today from like you're mentioning 5g to all our tech stuff to the wi-fi so there's a lot of ways you can work with it it's awesome kyle that your red light devices are actually um i'll say this about they're providing um healing benefit and that's absolutely amazing and rare it's rare that somebody will create a product that has you know a red light product with no EMFs or low EMFs and no flicker. I mean, that right there is super rare. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And I do want to, I want to throw something in there on the end of that statement is uh, I'm not the only one that's doing this. And I want to, I want to be very clear. There are, there's some other awesome companies and awesome people that are doing exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. And then there's some that, that are, you know, uh, not doing so awesome. Yes. And, but I just want to say that I'm not the only one, like it's, I'm not the only option. Um, and I'm very proud to say that Yeah. because I don't want to be the only option. If I'm the only option, that means we're as a society, a collective group, yeah. we're failing, you know, like, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh, stoked to talk to those other companies. And I have, I've reached out to the ones that I know that are doing it right. And just said, dude, you know, you're doing a great job. Like, I'm stoked for you. Like you're representing the industry the way that, you know, that it needs to be represented. And that's awesome. You know, some people are in it for the income and others are in it for the outcome. You know, and, uh, <laughs> I, I want to be part of the latter, you know? Absolutely. Well, really it's a big reflection in your offerings and all the research you've done and you've, you've done an autodidact on red light and you become an autodidact on this subject. And it's so, it's amazing. It's, um, you've done a lot of homework and research and it, it really is reflected in your products and your knowledge. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, another question that a lot of people ask me is how frequently do I use it? Sure. And, uh, I think that's a pretty important one to answer. Um, because, uh, yeah, I, I use the light every day. Um, I try to use it early in the morning. Uh -huh. Um, I usually, like I said, wake up where my blue blockers until I go out for the sunrise and then I don't put them on again until the sun sets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes I go in environments like grocery stores and stuff like that. I'll wear the clear lens ones that we sell as well. Uh -huh. But it, not all the time, you know, it, unless I'm stuck in some, you know, boardroom or some office thing that's just horrible lighting environment. I don't yeah. wear them again. But, uh, you know, after the sunrise, I go inside and uh, I use the red light. The ones I've been using is the Game Changer light, and then which is the smaller portable one, and then the El Fuego, which is the half body. Uh -huh. And I've been using both of them. It doesn't really matter. I kind of have them set up in different areas. But I usually take a shower and then use the light. I use it four minutes on the front part of me and then four minutes on the back. And if I have any specific knee, ankle, hip, uh, those seem to be my big ones because I'm a little older. And I run a lot. Uh -huh. I tend to do it for two to three minutes on say the knee, if that's the issue that day. And that's it. So I, you know, I'm, I'm spending less than 10 minutes on it. And uh, like I said, it's usually after a shower and before I get dressed. So I try to make it and try to explain that to people just so they know it's not this, this routine that's like hard to attain. Yeah. You know? I think that's great for people to hear because you know, if somebody's going to invest in this and they think, Oh, I've got to spend all this time doing it when really the, bulbs are, are are so bright and you're getting a big dose it's like yes. actually less is probably better in in 99 of the cases so i think that's really great for people to hear yeah and that's why we went after the the models that we sell is because i don't want people to stand there for 20 to 30 minutes because if if that's the case they're not going to do it i just know i mean I, and i'm trying to sell these as if they're going directly to my family and friends you know i'm not i'm not trying to picture this customer that's you know ununique to or unsimilar to to who I am and who I'm around so yeah I think that's a good go-to like hey if you wouldn't sell this to your mom or your kids you know <laughs> it's like uh Bill Gates uh you know he wouldn't let his kids on on his devices you know the kids couldn't weren't allowed on his devices and and so what is that saying about the product Steve Jobs yeah thank you. yes thank you yeah, they, and there's a ton of them like that, too. I mean, that's just the two most uh, easy, uh, everybody knows who they are. But you've right. got all kinds of Silicon Valley people that aren't letting their kids use any kind of computers at school and stuff. It's, it's kind of creepy, man. It's, it doesn't seem 
doesn't seem right. Like I said, it's clearly their motives are not for the outcome. You know, it's, it's a weird deal. I, I try to explain this to my kids. You know, like I tried, and then they try to tell some of their friends. So it's, I think this, the youth is going to grow up smart. Yes. I think they are, man. I got, I'm very optimistic that they're going to grow up. You know, it, my generation got a little weirded out because, you know, we started using uh, computers in like college, you know, uh-huh. yes. the, the internet and stuff. So we hopped out of college and we we're like, dude, this is the easiest thing ever. Like we're yeah. just going to start a company. Yeah. You know? <laughs> We're going to make websites. And that was what we did. So we just started a company and, and, you know, it was so easy, but now it's like completely different, super complicated, global connectivity. It's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Which brings up all kinds of different challenges and problems and stuff. Absolutely. So Kyle, um, I appreciate all that you've shared here on, on the show today. And if there was, a message that you'd like to deliver out there to people at this time about light, about red light, about health and healing, anything that comes to your mind, uh, what's a message you'd like to give the listeners today? Oh, man. Yeah, I, I guess going back to the way it all started for me, I think is something that every I wished everybody has the opportunity to do. And that's to spend one hour a day and just research something that's that interests you for no other reason just to learn more about something you're interested in because it started out with like philosophy and you know it's something that would have never I would have never thought learning about that would learn I would end up you know going in a direction of something else but just one hour a day learning something will change your life I mean it's it's so obvious. I try to inspire other people to do that. And yeah, that's what I would love to share with people. I love that. That's great. I think that's a great take home. And I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of people, uh, this is a perfect time to do that. Hey, there's not a lot of work going on in out in the world. You know, we're at home for the most part. And hey, this is a great time to start researching something you are really passionate about or you love or that you're just simply interested in. So I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's all about perspective. We're either stuck in a pandemic or we're, we're given an opportunity, you know, to change our life. It, you get to choose, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kyle, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate having you on. And uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom about red light and for all the awesome healing health related products you're offering to the world. Thank you. Uh, it's truly my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Primal Pioneer podcast. I hope that this episode has helped you bring more insight to red light and how light in general has huge implications on your health and body's ability to heal and repair and how living, working and playing. And when I say playing, AKA, I mean, working out at a gym under junk light and fake light, right along with man-made EMF exposure, which we dive into a lot in the Primal Pioneer podcast and uh, episode 13 really dove into that area as well. But these things are at the root of our health struggles today. However, I want you to know that there are very proactive, empowering ways to improve your light environment. And one thing you can do right now is head over to Kyle's site, MidwestRedLightTherapy.com and purchase a pair of his amazing and super affordable blue blocking glasses. I wear the night prowlers every day when I'm on the computer and I even wear them when I go into grocery stores to keep my eyes protected, my hormones and my melatonin levels all protected when I'm out in the world. Don't forget to use the code SUNLIGHTRX at checkout to receive a discount on your purchase. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love if you could please take a second to rate and review. Each review helps more and more people just like you get to the root of their health struggles and learn more about these important health topics that tend to get swept under the carpet or disregarded in both mainstream and alternative medicine. Yet these are absolutely crucial areas that helps you remove root causes of our modern health struggles and disease epidemics. So Rate and review, let's spread the love, and don't forget to take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your Instagram stories and tag me at SunlightRx. I'll give you a shout out right back. Thanks again for tuning in and see you next week.